Hey, it's your pal from Burke, and today we're going to take a look at the new 9800 AD series converter from WFCO. Now, if you own an RV of any type, you probably have a WFCO converter in it. They're found right behind this little panel right here that has your uh, circuit breakers in it. And your converter is this device right on the bottom. It turns a 110 AC power into 12 volt direct current power. This is the new auto detect model right here. The 98 is the series, so there'll be 9800 something. And then the last two digits are the amps that you can get. Uh, it comes in 35, 45, 55, I believe 65 and 75. So you're gonna wanna match that up to whatever it is you're gonna need in your camper. Uh, input is gonna be, uh, of course, 110 volt. Uh, it has an output of 950 watts. So uh, when you plug this into your camper, uh, if this thing is gonna pull full power, it's gonna pull that out of whatever socket you got it plugged into. So uh, I already popped a breaker, uh, learning, learning that the hard way. Anyhow, output is either gonna be 13.6 volts DC at 55 amps, and that's gonna be for a lead acid battery. And then if you have lithium batteries, it's going to be 14.6 volts at 50 amps, or at least that's what it says on the package. So the way this is supposed to work is that the converter itself uh, has the ability to detect how the battery is charging. And based on those charging characteristics, it will determine whether you're operating a lead acid or a lithium based battery. So if you're operating with a lead acid battery, it's going to have a, be a three stage charger, your bulk absorption and float. And then the lithium smart charging it's just going to be bulk and absorption one interesting thing about this converter that makes it a little bit different than its predecessor is that the fan in it always runs when it's providing power which uh, is okay except for the fan if you're going full blast is really quite noisy and it's even a little noisy uh, right now i'm only pulling 30 watts out of it and the fan will cycle up and then coast back down and it's not balanced so I can hear it going tick, 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 tick at the end. Like that. So this is of course not the normal way you're gonna mount this device, but once you get her mounted underneath the cabinet, it's really hard to test what's going on. So I got myself a little station set up here with the uh, power converter and underneath this bench are two 100 amp hour lithium batteries that I'm using to test this device. And basically what I've been doing is running them down and then bringing them back up to see how this converter performs. Connected to the batteries is this 1000 watt inverter and I have a little 250 watt heater that I'm gonna run off this inverter so that I can pull power from this converter to see how it operates. So let's go ahead and turn on the heater. So I apologize for the angle here. It's kind of kind of tough filming in a camper. Anywho, uh, what right now you can see we're pulling 318 watts off of the inverter. Uh, the converter is supplying 22.9 amps, and uh, now you can hear the fan running. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the charging function of this unit. My batteries are currently at 13.3 volts, so we'll get a good measure of what kind of power output this uh, converter is going to do. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the converter, and I apologize for the display being upside down. I don't know if I'll be able to flip that in uh, editing, but uh, yeah, that's just the way the wires worked out on this one. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug in this converter, and then you'll see what kind of power she's putting out. So this is pretty normal right here. Uh, it tends to fluctuate between uh, the 57 and, and 60 amps, usually in the uh, 59 range. And it does this for the whole duration of the charge right up until the very end. So this is the fan noise and it's, I'm getting the sound off of the microphone on my shirt, which wouldn't normally be uh, probably a big deal if you're plugged into shore power all the time. But see, you're out boondocking and you want to uh, run your generator to charge your batteries back up. You're going to be listening to the loud fan noise. And keep in mind, there's only just like a little piece of plastic between this thing and the cabin. Well, here we are several hours later. Yeah, we're back up to 14.5 volts, which is uh, 
letting you know that it thinks that this is a lithium battery because you would not want to do a uh, lead acid at 14.5 and uh, it's finally starting to taper down we're at 18.8 .8 amps so it's slowly cruising back down to uh, right before it shuts off installation is actually pretty simple uh, it's just as I said before two screws to get this panel off gives you access to your uh, assembly here right here is the uh, power converter that I swapped out from the original WFCO uh, it's been working fine I have no issues with it whatsoever uh, the only thing it doesn't do is charge lithium batteries so that would be the only reason I would actually need to replace this now what you want to consider is uh, how much space do you actually have right down here so my actual physical space underneath here is 12 inches by about four and three quarters inches which fits this model but i don't think it's going to fit this 55 amp model it's just going to be a little bit too tall to fit in there and just to, i mean it's not 12 inches long but you do have to give yourself some room for the power cord and for the 12 volt wiring coming in the different amperages on this unit do come in physically uh, different dimensional sizes so if you go to their website there's a lot of really good tech data on some sheets you can download and you can pick the one that's going to fit your uh, power panel here you can see this older one fits because there's a little bit of an indention right here that goes down to the floor that accommodates the bracket for this device and uh, this one is much longer and it's just not going to fit if I, if I try to put it in there it's going to be too tall Two interesting things about this unit. In the directions it says it make sure that you have two cubic feet of airspace to allow proper airflow for cooling, which uh, is obviously not going to be the situation if you stick that in there. It's not even the situation with the one I currently have in there. So I, I kind of wonder if they say, oh, did you put this in one of our WFCO boxes? Yeah, well, then you violated it has not enough cooling air. Uh, the other thing they mentioned is that the uh, the warranty might not be honored if it isn't installed by someone who's certified to install it. So if you're a home gamer, uh, you could put yourself at risk for putting this in yourself, even though it's dirt simple to do. Let's go ahead and wrap up this review. Uh, by and large, I think this charger does exactly what uh, it's, the manufacturer says it's going to do. I do have a, still have a question about why it pumps out 57 to 60 amps when charging a lithium battery. Uh, instead of the 50 that it says on the package. If they get back to me on that, I will leave uh, in the description what the explanation for that is. Of course, you want to make sure you get the right size unit for your camper. So uh, you got to pay attention to that, the physical dimensions of this before you go ahead and order one. Uh, they just sent this to me to evaluate. So they had no idea what size I had down there, whether it was going to fit or not. Anyhow, if you've got any questions about this guy right here, leave me a comment below and I will try to get back to you as fast as I can. Thanks for watching.